please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. In this video, there are five chapters. You may use this index to skip ahead to your desired chapter. Firstly, MapSource is the oldest software program by Garmin and was last available in October 2010. The last version was 6.16.3. However, if you try to install this version, it will not install unless you have an older version of MapSource already installed. MapSource was only available for Windows and not Mac operating systems. So this video is for users who already have MapSource installed on their Windows computers. If you have the older version, 5.1 for example, then 6.16.3 may still install, but there is no guarantee. You will find the link to MapSource 6.16.3 in the video description below. Here is a list of videos you should watch before continuing this tutorial. Again, the links are in the description below. Simply scroll down and click on the words show more and you'll see the full video descriptions containing all the links you require. Let's begin with chapter 1, getting you started in MapSource. Once MapSource is open, you'll need to get Tracks for Africa maps showing as your main map display. Go to the main toolbar and select View, then switch to Product and select Tracks for Africa maps. If you've already installed Tracks for Africa maps, it will appear in this window. Next is to set up your toolbars. Go to View, then select Show Toolbars, and then scroll down to Show All Toolbars. That will take care of all the tools you need in MapSource. Now let's set all your preferences. Go to Edit and scroll down to Preferences at the bottom of the list. Most importantly is Routing. Set your routing style to Use Auto Routing. Set your vehicle to Car or Motorcycle. Next, you need to untick all avoidances for the routing to work effectively. It's always recommended to set your calculation style to faster time rather than shorter distance. You can also use the slider tool to select your road preference to either minor roads or highways. Next, let's set up your measurement units. Set the distance and speed to metric, heading to true, Altitude and elevation to meters, depth to meters, area to square meters, and temperature to Celsius. Once you have finished with your preferences, click Apply and then OK to exit. To change the level of detail on your map, go to the View tab. You can select Map Detail and then choose the desired level of detail. To become familiar with all the tool icons on MapSource along the main toolbar at the top of the page, hover the mouse over each tool and the description of that tool will appear for 5 seconds. Let's move on to Chapter 2, Panning and Zooming in MapSource. The four main ways you can zoom in MapSource are as follows. You can use the plus key to zoom in. It will zoom to the center of the screen. And you can use the minus key to zoom out. Most commonly, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse. Roll the wheel forwards to zoom in, and roll the wheel backwards to zoom out. When using the scroll wheel on the mouse, wherever you point the cursor is where it will zoom into. Lastly, you can use the zoom tool on the main toolbar and draw a box around the desired area you wish to zoom into. With the zoom tool active, you can also left click to zoom in and right click to zoom out. The zoom will be from the position of the zoom tool. Hand tool, which is the hand symbol on the main toolbar, is very easy to use. With your mouse, you can click and drag the map around to the desired location. The second option is to click the View tab, then scroll down to Show Mini Map. The Pan Hand Tool symbol will appear in the Mini Map box and you can click and drag inside the box to pan the map around. Now let's move on to Chapter 3 waypoints and routes. 
Once you've located a point on the map that you would like to make a waypoint, in this case, the Blonarki Restaurant and Guesthouse in Calfinia, select the Waypoint Flag tool from the main toolbar and click on the location. The waypoint properties will appear and you have the option to edit the description or the waypoint symbol. Click OK to pin the waypoint. Once you have selected all the waypoints you'd like the route to pass through, you are ready to start joining them together with the route tool. Select the route tool from the main toolbar. Our intended route will go from the Dolphin and Guesthouse in Muley Point to the Blonarki Guesthouse in Calfinia via the Cedarburg. If the auto routing takes you via a road you don't want to use, you can switch to the selection tool and simply click the route line and drag it to the desired road. Then go back to the route tool and continue joining the waypoints. Once you have joined all the waypoints, you can right click and cancel the route tool. Next we need to inspect the route data. Double click the route line and the full route data will appear. Under the directions tab, you can scroll down to see the total travel time is a bit too much for one day's travel. So you might want to make the route a bit shorter with an overnight stay in the Cedarburg to break up the journey. Remember, the travel time indicated does not include fuel or lunch stops or any points of interest. If the auto routing will not go via a chosen path, generally there is a good reason for it. In this case, there is a locked gate and the Tracks for Africa maps will have a broken line at this point to prevent map source from auto routing through this road. You can use the zoom tool to inspect to see what's creating the issue. Now let's move on to Chapter 4, Finding Places in Map Source. When looking for places of interest or a specific lodge or fuel stop, there are a few ways to search for these points in Map Source. The easiest way is to right click on the screen closest to the area you desire and scroll down to Find Nearest Places. Select the place category from the drop down menu, in this case let's select Fuel. Map source will then show the fuel stops in order of proximity from the point you right clicked on the screen. To make the fuel stop a waypoint, select one of the results and click Make Waypoint. The waypoint properties will appear, click OK and then OK again to exit. As you can see there are no known fuel stops close to the route. To repeat the search, right click on the screen again in a different location. If you want to add a waypoint or overnight stop to the route, it's very simple. Let's use the Find Nearest Places icon this time. Remember, it will bring up search results closest to the center of the screen. From the drop-down menu, scroll to Lodging and we'll select Mount Cedar Guest Lodge and make it a waypoint. Click OK and click OK again to pin the waypoint. It's very important now to click on the route line and then drag it onto the waypoint to include it in the route. Now double click the route line and you will see that Mount Cedar Guest Lodge is now included. Under directions, you can see that it's 249 kilometers to Mount Cedar and the route will continue the next day to Calfinia. At this point, it's a good idea to change the name of the route so we can find it easily on the GPS once it's been transferred. First, untick auto name, then retype the new route name. It's a good idea to name each day or route in consecutive order. This way they will appear in the correct order on the Garmin GPS once uploaded. When we load a single file route onto the GPS, it will show the individual days as we've named them on the track. Let's add another day to the route. 
from Calfinia to Sutherland and on to Lord Milner Hotel in Mikey's Fontaine. When you're done, right-click on the route tool to cancel. Now choose the select tool and let's double-click on the line and rename it. Let's rename it day two and use the kilometers and the traveling time as our reference. We are now ready to transfer the route to your Garmin GPS. Now let's move on to Chapter 5, Transferring Data. Please ensure that the cable you're using to connect your Garmin to the computer is an authentic data cable, similar to that supplied by Garmin. Otherwise, your computer may not be able to read your Garmin device. Firstly, plug the GPS device into your computer. Let's say, for example, we have created a three-day route. Save the file in a folder you use regularly for all your routes. Let's save it as a generic GPX file. In this case, I have made three separate days riding, and I've named them accordingly. Day 1, 267 kilometers, 3 hours 22. Day 2, 252 kilometers, 3 hours 34 and day 3, 368 kilometers, 4 hour 30. This is the easiest way to manage your data and to know how far and how long each day is once you're navigating on the GPS. Even though we will transfer only one route file to the GPS, it will be split into separate days according to how we named each route and this is why it's important to name them in the order you intend to drive. Next, let's click on transfer, then scroll down to send to device. If your Garmin is connected correctly, it will appear under Device. If not, click Find Device. If you click on the GPS, you can either save it into the device or onto the SD card if inserted. Let's save it onto the GPS device. As you can see, it will transfer routes and waypoints. Click Send and it will confirm the data has been sent. Next, click OK to exit. Once you've turned your Garmin GPS on, you'll find the daily routes under the Route Planner or under Favorites on some GPS devices. To navigate, select the first day, click View Map, wait for the route to load, then click Go, and repeat this for each day's driving. That was the last video in our trip planning playlist. Stay subscribed to our YouTube channel for more videos on our products and African overland travel information.